Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, UMGANS, and welcome to the second session of Component B Seminar, which is actually part of uh, one of the components of, um, of your subject or your course, CAET 500C. And um, we're actually live via YouTube. So if there's someone or classmate, your classmates cannot join in this webinar, here in our Zoom, you can, they can go to the website. I mean, the YouTube channel of the University of Mindanao. You just have, they just have to click subscribe and then they can watch our um, um, Zoom live too. All right, so this time we will start our webinar for the Component B seminar. And before we will go on with the things that we're going to do virtually in the seminar, let's start first our seminar with a prayer.
So again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Component B seminar or webinar series this afternoon. This is our second session. And the aim of, of this webinar is to orient you students how to write a cover, a winning cover letter and also a resume. This will help you also be able to uh, prepare uh, for your for your job interview and many things that we're going to discuss this afternoon. And just to remind everyone to please um, click uh, the form or the link of the Google form for your attendance and also um, wrap up, put a picture on that so what do you uh, that um, attendance will be recognized by your coaches. And so this afternoon we are very privileged to have our resource speaker that will help us really know what's uh, the things that we have to do in order for us to have a winning cover letter and resume and also how to ace the interview. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President for External Relations and International Affairs, International Affairs, Dr. Reynaldo C. Castro. Thank you, Benji. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Kaid 500. Um, sige, I'll start sharing my screen, no? Okay, so um, there are a hundred of you here in the Zoom and the rest of you are watching through YouTube channel, through the YouTube channel of the University of Mindanao. And for those of you who have not subscribed yet, our YouTube channel, the University of Mindanao official YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. And as I mentioned, and as Ben just mentioned, mentioned by Benji, that today is the second series, no? the second batch of our k 500 Component B seminar. And your k 500 is a unique course no? offered by the university because you cannot find like this in other university. The intention of which is to help you prepare for your job search process. We understand that most of those of you who are enrolled in k 500 our senior graduating students and probably some are in still in their third year but again the intention is to help you uh, land or get the job that you want so if you're applying for a particular position then the course will help you get that particular job all right uh so i have to hit the big screen so that you can see the entire screen there you go so your Kaid 500 has three components. No? The component A was handled by the Guidance and Testing Center. Uh, the classes were done second to third week of the regular term class. And today is the start of your component B. No? Component B and component C are handled by the external relations. And um, there are staff of the external relations who are your k 500 facilitators who will help you go through the remaining topics and the remaining lessons of your k 500. So last two weeks, you were handled by the Guidance and Testing Center. And this week, you will be under the external relations and international affairs until the end of the term. Okay, so which means that there are two professors who will give you grades, no? And how are you being assessed for k 500? For component A, this is how you are being assessed by the Guidance and Testing Center. It's flashed on your screen. For component B, your attendance today is 35 points for the component B, no? Your k 500 facilitators will ask you to write and submit your sample application letter and resume that's going to be some of the assignments that you are going to do in your LMS. Uh, you're going to do that uh, through synchronous and asynchronous sessions no? with your LMS. And there will be coaching sessions. Again, that's through the LMS. Of course, your coaching session is one of the synchronous session no? of your K-800 with your K-800 facilitators. For component C, we're going to have another seminar no? and mock interview, that's 40 points. Your k 500 facilitators will ask you to submit a career portfolio and they will give you specific instruction on how to complete and how are you going to go about it. No? So you have to listen to them. 
And then uh, some coaching session, again, your synchronous classes in your NMS. Uh, that's five points. So this is how you are being assessed, okay? But before we continue, and for today's session, these are the topics that we're going to discuss, no? We're going to discuss how are you going to prepare an impressive cover letter and resume, and how are you going to ace in your job interview. But before we proceed to that specific topic, let's have poll, no? let's have some questions first, okay? So we'd like to ask Benji to flash on the screen. I have to stop, I think, sharing no? so that Benji can, can share no? the poll. Okay, so there you go. Uh, let's answer this. You answer this first. What is the most burdensome issue you have encountered in online classes? So click your answer, uh, whether accessibility to internet connection, shorter attention span brought about by absence of face-to-face -face encounters, heavier workloads, or home environment not being conducive to learning. Sige, both now. Okay, so Benji will just stop no, showing on screen the poll questions once everybody has voted. So let's see the result. Okay, there you go. 44% says that it's accessibility to internet connection. It's common. No? And then 28% says that it's the heavier workloads. Okay. Sige. So, yeah, it's true. Our internet connection really is giving us so much problem with regards to our online classes. Mm -hmm. Let's proceed to another question. What do you consider as a major stressor for you as a student in this pandemic? Fear and worry about your own health and of your own loved ones? Pressure to meet financial obligations, increased concerns on academic performance, or decreased social interactions due to physical distancing. Okay. So ano yung nakaka-stress sa inyo in this pandemic bilang isang sudyante? Okay, guess so Benji will show the result once everybody has voted. And the result oh increased concerns on academic performance. Talaga ha worry kayo sa inyong academic performance followed by financial obligations. Okay, totoo yan no kasi probably our parents or tayo affected tayo no yung ating mga jobs and incomes and the like okay there you go still have another poll questions benji please flash on screen how can schools how do you think schools can help students protect their mental health in this time of pandemic ayan paano kayo makakatulong ang university Put up online support system for professional guidance and counseling. Reduce your academic workload or provide virtual chat room for peer support groups to encourage social interactions among students. Yan. Alam niyo yung morning session walang ganito kayo nang sa afternoon session, no? so sorry kayo. Okay. So Benji will flash on screen uh, the result of the poll. Mm, academic expected talaga yan, academic workload, no? And then online support system. All right, still have more question? Last one? Ah, hindi pa pala last, no? Kasi may question pa about, ano, no? Uh, about doon sa mga application. Sige. Which part of the application process you have 
most difficulty with? No? Anong part sa application process nahirapan kayo? Is it writing the resume and application letter, answering the interview questions, or making follow-up with your application? Anong pinakamahirap sa inyo, sa tingin niyo? Para may feel tayo, no? Okay, result. Uh, interview question, 77% overwhelming. 12% no? following, following up your application. Okay, all right. Talaga ha, sige. <laughs> Next up, I think we still have three more, two more. Let's see. Which job-related skills you think are more important no? that you need to develop, that you need to possess? No? Knowledge or basic skills like speaking and writing, no? functional related skills specific to your professional field, behavioral and leadership skills including teamwork, stress management. Ano kaya sa mga skills na ito ang sa tingin ninyo pinaka-importante na dapat meron kayo? No? Basic skills ba? Yung functional related skills? Or yung behavioral and leadership skills? Si Sherry Ann, wala daw siya makita ng mga poll para makapag-vote. Meron naman. Hindi ko alam. Bakit hindi siya maglabas? Sige, results probably are in. Oh, okay. 41% says that it's the functional related skills specific to the position. Followed by behavioral and leadership skills. Okay. All right. Really, ha? Sige. Last, last two or last one? I do not know. Sige. Thinking more generally, when do you expect everyday life to return to normal? Ano sa tingin ninyo? Kailan kaya magbalik tayo sa old normal? Within the next three months? In three to six months, in six to 12 months, in one to two years, longer than two years, or never, wag naman never, no? Sherry, ano bang gamit mo? Uh, baka, ano, baka cell phone, no? Baka sa cell phone, uh, Hindi pwede. Hmm, depende sa version sa Zoom. Dapat ano, updated ang Zoom. Sige, okay. I think results are in. So let's check. Hmm, common talaga, no? This is the fourth time that we ask this question and uh, majority says that it's going to be one to two years. Ako naman, hopeful ako that in three to six months, no, yan ang sagot ko. Pero okay, majority of you says that it's one to two years. All right, let's pray and hope that it's going to be very soon than that. No? Sige. All right. What coping mechanism have you done or usually do to deal with the stresses of the new normal? So anong ginagawa ninyo ngayon para uh, to cope no, the stress that you have in right now? Prayer, meditation, self-destructing, binging, watching TV, no? seeking emotional support, setting boundaries on too much media consumption. Sige nga, tingnan natin, no? Uh, 
Ah, laptop gamit mo, Sherry Ann. Ah, sige na lang, Sherry Ann. Oh. Sayang yung iyong vote. <laughs> But the most important thing, Sherry Ann, is makita mo naman ang screen at marinig mo naman ako. So, I think that's more important. Sige, results are in. And, okay. Oh, okay. Ayan. Ano talaga kayo? iGen talaga kayo, no? Yan talaga ang generation ninyo, no? Yan, listening to music, watching TV, self-destructing, followed by prayer and meditation. Okay, that's good. Sige. Meron pa ba? How effective do you think your university has been in supporting students during the outbreak of COVID-19? So, we're talking about the UM, how effective and how fast UM uh, was able to respond to the pandemic. No, Extremely, very effective, moderately effective, slightly effective, not at all effective. Sige, so I want your honest answer anyway. I cannot track you. Uh, if you are going to vote for that particular answer, then hindi ko naman makita kung ano ang giboto mo. No? So don't be hesitate. Don't hesitate to respond to that question. Give an honest answer. Okay, results are in. Let's see. Ha ha ha. Okay, moderately effective. 45% says it's moderately effective. 25% says it's slightly effective. Uh, merong nagsabi na 6% na not at all effective. Okay? All right. So, is that all, Benji? Kung, okay. Should you include personal info in your resume like religion, height, and weight? What do you think? When you're going to write a resume, are you going to include religion, height, and weight? In your resume, what do you think? Yes or no? Okay. Votes are in. Results are in. Then let's see. No. Uh, 80, 60% says it's no. 40% says it's yes. Mm, okay. Malalaman natin yan mamaya. I think we have one last question about picture. Let's flash that. Should you include your picture in your resume? Yes or no? What do you think? Okay, results are in. Let's take a look at what's your answer. 80% yes, 20% no. Ayan, exciting to. Sige. So let's end our polling and let's proceed to our discussion. Thank you, Benji. Uh, I'll share my screen now. So this is going to be our topic this afternoon. We're going to talk about how are you going to prepare your cover letter and resume, something that will really catch the attention and interest, something that will notice the attention of your potential employer, and how are you going to confidently respond to questions to job interview. So let's start with cover letter. Why write a cover letter? Well, one reason there is that for you to show your communication skills, particularly your writing skills. And let me remind you that regardless of your program, regardless of your discipline, of your career, whether you're into criminology, engineering, education, business administration, you really have to communicate and you really have to write something. And one way, the first way of assessing your ability to write 
is through your application letter. No? So that's why um, you have to be good in writing your application letter. The second one is to highlight your particular skills, no? specific to the position, like for example, your past work history or other areas that are relevant to the position that you're applying for. You have to think your application as a quick sales pitch. No? If you're in a pitching uh, competition, if you're in a pitching discussion, then you are pitching yourself for that position. You're telling the listeners, no, the judges or the, the jurors that you are the best person, the best candidate for the position. The other one is that, remember this always, that for one position, there's a dozen or two of you applying for the position, especially if the job opening is well announced, no? it's being posted on public places, on public bulletin boards and the like, then you expect that there's going to be a lot of you queuing up, uh, lining up for the application. That's why the first wave, the first stage of assessing the best potential candidate is through the uh, application or the cover letter, okay? And how are you going to write a winning cover letter, an impressive cover letter? Then you start with, of course, the date. No, do not forget the date. Your address is there and then the date. And then you have to uh, include the name of the addressee, the name of the addressee. If you don't have, if you don't know where to address, no? to whom you're going to address the letter, then you have to exert extra effort. You give a ring, you call, or you send an email, uh, or you pay a visit. If you are allowed to go to the company, then you pay a visit, you go there, you ask the HR office that you are interested to submit an application letter and that you want to get the name of the person to whom you can address the letter, all right? Because it's not enough that you are going to write there the president or the HR manager, because I'm telling you each company, they have their protocol, no? And knowing that at the start of your engagement, potential engagement with the company will impress them, will impress the employer, the interviewer, that at least in that case, you have already exerted extra effort. Then you have to write also the position of the person. No? So for example, Miss Joe Anti Santos, HR manager. Okay, Make it sure that she's the HR manager because she might be the VP for HR. And if you have written their HR manager, you have demoted Joe Ann Santos. So critical that you have to get the exact, the correct position uh, or the correct designation of the addressee. All right? And then the name of the company, no? Dapat kompleto, sakto pagkasulat, no? Because uh, it's going to be a mortal sin if you have misspelled the name of the company or uh, if there's something that you miss there, no? In the name of the company. And then the address of the company, all right? So shown on screen, a sample format on how are you going to write the inside address. And then comes next is the salutation. The salutation, you have to be formal sounding in this part because remember that application letter is a formal type of communication. If it is a formal type of communication, then you have to be a corporate sounding, all right? Um, so do not write there, dear, dear Miss Santos, unless you are close with Miss Santos, you know each other very well, no? then you can write dear. But if it is not your first, I mean, you have not met the person no? and the person has occupied higher position in the organization, then you have to uh, pay respect no? to that person by being formal sounding in your application letter or in, even in your salutation. So you can write there, Miss Santos. Your first paragraph, you're going to mention how did you get to know about the job openings or the job vacancies and your intention for the position, right? So for example, you would say, in response to the May 18 advertisement in Mindanao Times, I have enclosed my resume for the marketing assistant position. No? So 
cite whether you have read that somewhere else, whether in a local paper, in a national daily, or did somebody told you, no? Uh, so that is that person working from in that company or who is that person telling you, giving you the information that this company is hiring for that specific position? Why is that so? Why you are going to cite that? Because it's very important to them. No? They will appreciate that if you make if you mention that in your application letter. Okay. The second paragraph. That's where you are going to describe your qualifications. No? You can point out any related experience you have, maybe from your OJT or your professional work. You sell yourself, I mean, you sell your skills and knowledge relevant to the position. So the key there is that when you write your second paragraph, because that's where you're going to uh, sell yourself, no? tell something about yourself, about your capability, your ability, your potential to perform the job. Two things. One is that you can cite your work experience no? uh, because your work experience gives you the opportunity to apply the things that you have learned in the university, all the theories, all the concepts, your actual work experience, whether it's a professional work experience or OJT or immersion or internship, whatever it is. The thing there is that you have experience, you have tried to apply the theoretical learnings, no? the theoretical knowledge that you have acquired in the classroom discussion. So that's the first one. So importante yun, kasi pag nakita nila na ah, may experience ka na, not only that you have developed the uh, professional skills that is needed to perform the job, but you also have acquired certain uh, soft skills. No? The soft skills that I'm referring to, for example, are the work attitude skills, no? your um, ability to follow orders no? from the company, rules and regulations of the company. All right. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. So that's very important. That's number one. The second one is that you mention what are the attributes that you have, no, the the abilities, no, the characters that you have, which are relevant to the position. Because being these are the soft skills, no, the soft skills. These are not technical skills, but these are the soft skills that are also very necessary in the performance of the job. So that's your second paragraph. The third paragraph, that's where you're going to close your letter. But in closing, you have to thank the reader and that you have to open the door for meet and greet. Meaning, you, because you cannot mention everything in a one-page application letter, right? What you're going to mention there are highlights. But you know, there are things that you want to share to the potential interviewer, to the HR, and you can only do those, no? you can only share those uh, in the actual interview, in the face-to-face -face interview, okay? So you can mention there that I wish to discuss my qualifications and interest for the position with you at your most convenient time. So you can include there your contact number and your email address. And then your close, complimentary closing, you have sincerely, then your name, and then your signature, okay? So that's how you're going to do it. Simple, but at least um, it's full of substance. It's full of content, no? Uh, so I have here another example from a CAID 500 student enrolled last semester. And I think this student, uh, the career portfolio of this student was adjudged the best portfolio. No? So it follows the format that I mentioned. There's a date, there's a name, uh, the position, but ang tanong ko lang dito, bakit human, human resource staff? Probably when you write an application letter, it must be addressed to someone, you know, higher in a position, no? someone occupying a higher position in the organization, okay? And then you have there Mr. Baluran, the first paragraph mentioned about the intention of the applicant for the position and how Runyelin 
got to know about the information, about the position, about the job opening. The second paragraph mentions about the qualification, like, you know, she's a graduate of psychology. Uh, she has a one-year experience. Uh, and then she's enthusiastic, dependable, and hard worker. So these are the attributes or the characteristics that she thinks that is that are relevant no, to the position in the medical psychiatric department of the hospital, okay? And then she mentioned that there's a resume and she loved the opportunity to share her counseling skills and caring nature. So if that's the content, if that's how the application letter is written, you know, it will capture the interest of the interviewer and for sure this applicant will be scheduled for job interview, okay? So that's the first one. For sure, you are now ready to write your sample application letter, no? okay? As I said that your K-500 facilitators, five of them, no, after your uh, guidance and testing center uh, in charge, you're now with external relations and I have five of my staff who will be assisting you. They are your kind 500 facilitators. So each code, each one of you probably is enrolled to any of the five. No? So we have Benji Mainopas, we have Glenn Louis Banoy, we have Lady May Ontong, we have Isa Monte de Ramos, and we have Tricia Dingal. So they will help you and they will assist you as you go through no, uh, in the remaining components of CAI 500. Okay, so let's proceed to another important document that you are going to submit to your potential employer when you go through an application process, and that is your resume. And it says here that the resume is your personal brochure to market yourself. It should give your potential employer a quick view of what you can do for them, all right? So for new graduates, just like you, you can list your accomplishments in school. Do not worry about not having work-related accomplishments. You can pick out those school accomplishments that show responsibility, reliability, cooperative spirit, and the like. That's why my suggestion is that uh, you as a student, it's okay if you are, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay if you, are, if you are so serious about your academic performance, you concentrate, you spend time with your academic grades, with your academic lessons and the like. But you know, if all of you are doing that, then what separates you from the rest? There must be something that's maverick in you. There must be something that gives you the competitive edge over the other. So how are you going to do that? Aside from you are serious in your academic lessons, try to do, try to participate also and involve in extracurricular activities, no? Because your extracurricular activities, that's where you are going to prove your responsibility, your reliability, and your cooperative spirit and your leadership potential, all right? So that aside from having grades because after all you know let's accept the fact that grades are not the only indicator of telling that a person uh, will be successful in the future and that you are capable of performing a particular task it's not the only indicator but there are so many indicators no? and like for example you will get to develop your socialization skills by involving in many school activities, all right? Or even your community activities, participating in a community extension program, all right? So in that sense, even if you are fresh, if, even if you are novice to the world of work, then you can really tell that if you will be given the opportunity to work in a certain organization and be assigned in a specific task, there is really a possibility that you can perform that very well because you have shown in the past how responsible you are, how credible and how reliable you are, okay? And so flash on the screen, you can see on screen the format, no? how are you going to write your resume? 
So the most important thing comes first, followed by the least important. Okay. So your most important uh, thing there, the most important part of your resume is, of course, your name, your address. Your address, why you have to include the address? No? Because this HR, no, the company will do a background investigation. They will visit your Purok, no, your barangay, and ask the barangay officials probably or the Purok leaders whether you are truly a resident in the area and whether you have participated in the Sunday community health uh, sorry, cleaning greening program no kanang manghinlo sa mga kanal manghinlo sa kadalanan ingon ana whether you are active on that or not no whether you are truly a resident in that area no and then your contact number and your email address are also very important because these are the means where the potential employer will communicate with you at once whenever it's necessary for them to contact you because you have to advance to the next phase of your application process, you are scheduled for interview or whether there are documents that you need to submit. No? This is how they're going to communicate. No? Fast. Ayan. At once. Immediately. No? So, pag wala kang contact number and email address, mahirap. All right? Summary statement. You know, HR people are busy people. They don't have the luxury of time. That's why when they read your application and your resume, they will only read that skimmingly. When I say skimmingly, they're not going to read all that. No? So they will just find important points, no? important parts of your resume that will catch their attention. And one of that is summary statement. And I'd like to, as an HR, I'd like to know what is the qualification, the best qualification of this applicant that will tell me that he deserves or she deserves to be called for job interview. And I'm going to read that in the summary statement. Okay. So later on, uh, I'm going to show a sample summary statement. The other one is your work experience. You know, importante talaga ang experience eh, because kung masyadong ano ka, masyadong novice, no, as in zero as in you know you start from the scratch i have to tell you what to do even answering a telephone you know even complying an id or complying a documents getting a pagibig number an sss number or a gs gsis number do i need to tell you that i mean those are basic stuff so if you are so novice no if you are really at the, at the bottom when it comes to experience. And there are other applicants that have better experience than you are. Then what's the chances of you being considered? Of course, not, diba? So that's why I, I keep on emphasizing the relevance of work experience. Even if it is not a professional work experience, even if it is an OJT experience, that's okay. That's why... Ngayon, kayo, kayo ngayon, you can get an SSS number. You can get your own pagibig number, all right? Because if you have those, that means that you're already responsible for yourself. No, you are really looking forward for your future career. It's not about employment or job, no, but it's about your future career. And that's why you have your SSS number, you have you have your pagibig, you have all these numbers, no? Because you are preparing yourself for a better future, a better career in the future. The other one is that job responsibility. So you can specify there if you have an OJT, an internship, or a professional work experience. You can mention what are your specific job responsibilities because the employer is interested to look into that. Ah, ito pala ang ginawa niya no? during his exposure during his work experience in the past okay and then your accomplishments pag meron ka kasing accomplishments other than you know graduate ka ng isang kurso ng isang degree ng isang program and if you have other work experience ikaw yung tao that marunong ka ng ano no marunong ka ng uh, multiple work di ba i mean you really spend time in your age right now, at your age right now, 
you really make the most out of it. You know what I mean? That for you, walang lal period, walang wasted time. Each minute, no? every minute of an hour and every hour of the day, really you value a lot no? that you spend each minute, each hour for you to grow yourselves because after all, you only pass that stage in your life once, all right? So I hope you get you get what I mean, all right? So accomplishments, no? Dapat ano ka lang, da, meron ka pa, no? Meron ka pa other achievements because I'm telling you the world the world of work, the competition is so stiff. E tayo sa Pilipinas, grabe ang competition lalo na ngayon, no? The situation that we are in right now, 'di ba? Other companies are resizing, reducing their workforce. That's why What's the what's the possibility that they are going to hire new employees? No, others would just be contented with their existing manpower, and if they're going to hire, uh, if they have available position, if they have available job, then the competition is going to be very very stiff. All right, so that's why while you are still in the university, this is your preparation stage. You have to make the most out of it. All right, playing ML, my goodness, will not help you grow, de ba? Uh, so that's why how much time you spend playing an ML, watching uh, telenovela, watching binging your uh, Netflix series will not help you grow. You know what I mean? So that this is not the time for you to do that. This is the time for you to invest much in yourself okay and then your education so that's where you're going to mention about your degree okay so that's how you're going to write your uh, resume so your resume should answer this key question what can you do for me when you write your resume you have to go back to this guiding points and uh, this is going to be your checklist and if you think that you have responded all these questions then probably you have written an impressive no uh, resume okay so first is that what can you do for me this is very important that you have to highlight your skills no your talent your knowledge relative to the position relative to the requirement of the job position do you have the skills i'm looking for if there's a need for you to manipulate some equipment no whether a machine, a computer, or a language in computer, or if there's going to be a need for you to uh, mix chemicals and the like, if you're chemical engineering or if you're chemistry graduate or your biology, whatever, no, and you know how to do that, no, you know, it's about skills. It's about that you have cited, you have mentioned that in the poll a while ago that. To you, the most important skills are the skills that are relevant to your uh, to your profession, no? To your degree. So, ito na, ito na ating pinag-usapan, de ba? Where have you worked before? I already mentioned the importance uh, of your work experience. That's why alam nyo, dati merong computer science and IT, no? Because lahat ng MOA for OJT pass through our office kami ang nagre-review ng mga memorandum of agreement ninyo for OJT no office namin nagtaka ako because merong MOA IT computer science na ang kanilang exposure doon sa isang laundry shop no sabi ko anong gawin ng mga computer and IT students sa laundry shop pwede siguro sila magawa ng program kung paano pa andarin gusto ko 20 minutes lang ma hindi ko alam no i'm not good at that but i would presume na that's the that's the reason why they will be exposed to a laundry shop but the thing there is that you know it's not enough that when you are placed for OJT to a particular company is that for you to apply the knowledge no the theories that you have learned in school it's not enough you have to learn other stuff like I, I emphasize soft skills. So, anong makukuha mo sa isang laundry shop when it comes to work attitude, di ba? When it comes to 
uh, following orders, when it comes to, you know what I mean? Ang daming pwede mong makuha. So wala, wala ka makuha doon. No? So X. Uh, at saka nag-university ka pa na ma-expose ka naman pala sa isang laundry shop. You know what I mean? So it seems that yung iyong OJT coordinator are, are not ex are not uh, exerting so much effort in looking for the best uh, HTE or host training establishment for your OJT. No? Is your experience relevant to my needs? Do you have the right education and credentials? What kind of person are you and where can I contact you? Okay. All right. So as I said, when you write your resume, you have to go back to these key questions and make this as your checklist, as your guide questions, as your benchmark no? when you write your resume. How long should a resume be? Well, we said that it should not be more than two pages. One is that HR are busy people. No? They are busy. They only read that skimmingly. They don't have the luxury of time to read your resume. So you should know how to compress important, relevant information about you in a two-page, not more than two-page resume. What should you include in your personal data? Well, kanina, 60% uh, says no, that, uh, that kasama ba? No? Ang sagot natin dyan is that, for example, height, weight, and religion are not important in your application. Kung halimbawa ang height mo is 5'1", apply ka ng accounting staff, anong connection ng height mo na 5'1 sa pag-perform ng trabaho ng isang accounting staff? Di ba wala? Unless sa criminology, merong agencies, no? government agencies, specifically require, requiring applicants to have a height of at least 5'5", manata, no? cannot remember that because uh, hindi ko alam kung matangkad ka ba at kung halimbawa uh, maghuli ka ng, ng isang suspect, suspected criminal tapos kung magtakbuhan kayo, mas mabilis ba magtakbo ang matangkad? Hindi ko alam. No? Why is it that height is a requirement for criminology graduates? But at least I heard that in the Congress, uh, nasa final reading na na tanggalin na ata yung requirement na yon no for for tourism graduates specifically who wa those who want to work in an airline industry as a flight attendant i think yeah okay because kung hindi ka naman 55 ang height mo if your height is below 55 remember that one of your work as flight attendant is to assist the passengers put their luggage on the cab cabin no and kung Five ka lang, di ba? E, ikaw pa yung ayon sa pasahero. Alright? So, there are specific positions that, you know, height, weight, probably, is required. But it's not all. After all, in the Philippines, we have an anti-discriminatory law uh, that is monitored by the Department of Labor and Employment. So, companies should not put their specific height requirement and age requirement. Okay? Should I put my photo in my resume? 80% of you says yes. My answer is no. If you ask HR people, yes, their answer is yes. You have to put your picture in your resume. My answer again is no. Why is that so? Because let's accept the fact that we human beings, we have biases towards good looks. No? Uh, pag makita natin ang aplikante medyo itsuraan, may mukha, excited tayo, no? interested tayo, oh, okay siya, ganyan-ganyan. So, interviewin natin. No? Ngayon, let's also accept another fact that not all of us are endowed with good looks. Okay? Konti lang sa mundo ang biniyaan ng magandang mukha, magandang itsura. No? Hindi, wala naman perfect. Maganda nga sila, pero baka hindi naman sila magaling, di ba? E ikaw, hindi ka naman kagandahan pero magaling ka, no? Ngayon, alam mo yon you know the fact that you are not endowed with good looks and then what you're going to do is that you're telling the photographer to do something about your picture, no? So, if a Photoshop, pag-submit, sasabihin ng interviewer, okay, uh, we will now interview applicant number seven. E ikaw yon pasok ka. Good afternoon, ma'am. 
uh, I'm applicant number seven. Oh, the name here is like this and like that. Yes, that's my name, ma'am. Oh, you look different in the picture. O, di ba? So, pag interview pa lang, wala na, no? Nainsulto ka na. Alright? Nabully ka na, di ba? So, dahil sa kagawan mo. Others would take their picture. Second reason, others would take their picture in a group shot. Tapos guguntingin lang. Pag gunting, nadala ang dalunggan sa tapad, di ba? So, I suggest that at the first phase of your application in writing your resume, do not submit, do not include your picture. And then later on, if they will require you to submit your picture, that's going to be the time that you put your picture, okay? Because we don't want that they will judge you based on how you look, but they should judge you and they will give you the opportunity to be interviewed based on the content of your resume, okay? What about references? Well, uh, you put persons their names of people who can help you no uh, vouch your qualifications vouch your ability because the reference persons if i am the hr i will look for somebody who can tell me that the information that you have written the things that you have written in your resume are true diba so kaya meron kang reference person others would consider it as a backer uh, pariha kaninang morning, may tanong siya, no? Ang question niya is that, anong gawin ko, sir, kung wala akong backer, di ba? Oh, so, yan na yung iyong reference person. That's why you have to be careful also about your reference person. Uh, make it sure that, number one, kilala ka nila, they know who you are, they know you are applying for what and where, and they know lots about you, so you can provide them a copy of your resume, no? Make it sure that that reference person is in no conflict with anybody in the organization or in the company that you're applying for. For example, you're applying to Mayor Sara Duterte, no? City Mayor of Davao, Davao City. No? And then, ang iyong reference person, kasi tiga Davao del Norte ka, si Congressman Alvarez. O, oh, di ba? So, wala na. No? Tiuro ka na. Why? Because, you know, Mayor Sara and uh, Congressman Alvarez are, you know, not in good terms, di ba? They're not in the same uh, political organization and they have conflict in the past. So it's also important that uh, you have a good investigative skills with regards to the person that you are going to consider as your reference person. Your summary statement, as I mentioned a while ago, is something that, you know, will talk, will inform the HR of your best qualification in a statement or two. That's why your summary statement should briefly highlight your strongest skills specific to your position and you mention relevant career highlights. It should also include keywords if at all possible and it should give the employer an idea of who you are and why they should read further. So let me show some example here. So. How are you going to write your summary statement? You go back to the second paragraph of your application letter. Anong clue ang binigay ko sa inyo doon? Unang-una, ano yung inyong work experience? What is your work experience? And number two, what are the traits, the attributes, no? the characteristics you have which you think are necessary in the performance of the job? No? So for example, it says here, an achiever with a track record of leadership in handling school organization. So that first statement talks about the experience of the applicant. But it's not about work experience after all. That experience has something to do about the experience of the applicant when he was still in school. And it's a leadership experience. Now, probably he's an active in organization, uh, or whatever activities there are in the university or in the school. No? So the succeeding part statement says that the applicant possesses excellent skills in problem solving, planning, and fundraising, resourceful, works well under pressure, and delivers timely results. So the last two statements talks about talk about the attributes, no? the characteristics of the applicant. So ganun pagkasulat, no? So, for example, ganyan yung inyong summary statement. Yan ang inyong summary statement. Yan ang sinulat ninyo sa inyong resume. 
So sasabihin ngayon ng HR na, oh, you mentioned in your summary statement that you're an achiever with a track record of leadership in handling school organizations. Ah, niya ikaw, kayo mo na dahil itong gikopya somewhere. Pwede ka kapanukan. Pumunta na ka sa interviewer. Can you tell me something about this? Ah, oh, pitok-pitok na dahil yung mata, no? ba? Diba? So, even if you have copied that somewhere else, make it sure that number one, uh, it's reflective of who you are. It's really who you are. No, the descript the description there is is you. No, second is that you have read. No, you have understand what is being written there. No, because at least when you are being asked by the interviewer, then you can respond. No, you can answer to the question. Okay, ayon. Yeah, another one. A hardworking individual with excellent cooking skills, specializing in Japanese dishes, gained from work experience as a cook in a restaurant chain. Ayan. Mahaba siya, first statement. Pero yan speaks about the experience no? of the applicant. Probably uh, she or he worked in a Japanese resto before. And for sure, he is applying in a Japanese resto. No? Not in a Korean resto, but in a Japanese resto. The second statement talks about the characteristics again, the attributes of the applicant. So it says there, gets along well with people, trustworthy and reliable. Yung mga gets along well with people is akin to saying that that person uh, is a teamwork, no? has a teamwork ability or characteristic. No? Okay. Some things that you have to watch out in writing your application, number one, there's co there's no contact info. So again, I emphasize the importance of your contact number and of your email address. Typo. Typo is a mortal sin because after all, we would expect that all your documents, all the documents that you are going to submit are computer generated. And after all, ang computer mag-auto-correct yan. No? So kahit word ang ginagamit mo, mag auto correct yan, all right? Too much information that are not relevant, just like your height, weight, and religion, these are not important, and that you tend to forget important information that are, you know, uh, relevant to the interest of the interviewer and to the position. Um, there's a lot of format. You want to show to the HR that you know all the format in the world and that you know all the font sizes in the world. No, uh, You like to see so many fonts being used in your communication, in your documents. And that's not good, you know. The word there is that you have to be consistent. The idea there is that you have to be consistent. No? You stick to one style, one format, and one font style, okay? And others are not true, no? You're telling lies embellishments and you're exaggerating so don't do that no, in your application so i think you are ready to write your second document which is resume uh, so there are two documents that you are going to complete for component b you are going to upload that that's one of the asynchronous no assignments uh, tasks that you are going to comply writing your own application letter and your resume okay and you are going to include that for componency, that will form part of your career portfolio in your componency. Okay, so if you're done with the application letter and your resume, then let's proceed to the next part of your screening process, which is considered to be the most dreaded part, the most tension-filled part of your application, the interview. And for sure, you will agree with me if I would say that it's the most tension-filled because, you know, it's not only butterflies in the stomach, but it's crocodiles and dinosaurs fighting with each other. When you are there in the interview, and you have cited that, when during the poll, I ask you which part of your screening process you think that's more challenging, that's you know quite difficult no? uh, of all the stages of your application, and you mentioned that it's facing the interview and you are correct no facing the interview so let's go back to the application and the resume if 
after submitting your application letter and resume and you have not received any feedback, no? you were not called for interview or that you were not called for other stuff, for other phases and the like, simple answer, why? Your application letter and your resume do not impress the interviewer, the HR. So, hindi siya mas maganda pagkasulat. Ganun lang kasimple yun. Okay? But after submitting your resume and your application letter, you're scheduled for interview. And in, more, in most cases, the interview is the final stage of the screening process. It's like, you know, beauty contest, di ba? Sa beauty contest, ang daming mga pagdaanan mo. May mga swimsuit, may mga gown, preliminary screening and the like, di ba? May mga top 20, top 16, rampa-rampa ka dira, o na na na. Tanaw ng kagwapa ni mo, kaanyag, ana ana. And the final five is only the interview. So, beauty is no longer considered there, no? di ba? I mean, you have gone through so many screening in terms of beauty, but the final stage is the interview. So, which of the candidates in the beauty contest in the top five finalists can manage well, no? can discuss well, can respond well to the question, will win the crown. The same thing with the application process in a job interview. Um, even if you are not the most qualified, the best person to perform the task, but you, are, you have delivered the best answer and you have the best Uh, respond, no? the best interview, the best performance, for sure you will get the job. There's no reason that you will not get the job. Okay? So the interview, in short, is the deciding factor of who among the applicants will get the position. Ayan. So ganun ka-importante ang interview. Ha? Okay. So, how to ace in the interview? If you have read the book of Sancho, The Art of War, it says there that preparation is winning half the battle. So, if you have prepared for that occasion, after all, job interview questions are the same question over and over again. Then, why is it that you cannot respond? It's the same thing as beauty contest. No? The questions in the beauty contest are the same over and over again about environment, about women empowerment, about children, you know, about technology and the like. Diba? Pareho lang yan, pabalik-balik. Yan, anong video kakatubag? Diba? So, same thing in a job interview. The same questions over and over again. And why is it that The job interview is the deciding factor. First reason, how candidates behave during the interview is often seen as an indicator of how they will perform. It's up close and personal. Eh. If I am the interviewer, I'm the HR. And, you know, it's a face-to-face -face interview, even online interview. I can have a better gauge now of whether you can perform the task well. Because... Basing from your answers, how you respond to questions, I can now judge, no? I can now assess whether you can perform the job or not, all right? Second, the better prepared you are, the less nervous you will feel and the more confident you will appear. So there are two things there that you need to take note in the second statement. One is about confidence. And if you are confident in your answers, in yourself during the question and answer during the job interview, well, no question about it. You're also confident in performing the job because the way you respond to my question, I am the interviewer, you are confident, then you are confident also of performing the job. The second one, if you are spontaneous in your answer, that means that you are sincere in your answer. You are truthful in your answer. But if you are not spontaneous, pautal-utal ka, nganga ka, di ba? And the like, uh, di ka sincere, di ba? Bakit ka utal-utal? Dahil pinag-iisipan mo, nag-iisip ka kung ano ang magandang sagot. Hindi ka honest at sincere sa iyong sagot. That's why you are not spontaneous. Where in fact, Sometimes it's not true or most of the time it's not true because tense ka eh. That's why hindi ka diretso makasagot, di ba? Pero yun ang impression. Bakit hindi ka diretso makasagot? You know what I mean? So practice nyo talaga kayo na spontaneous kayo, no? confident kayo magsagot. Alright? 
The third is that the more you know about the company and the position, the better you will sell yourself. It, you are there to have a long-term engagement with the organization. And I would presume, if I am the interviewer, that you have an advanced knowledge of this organization. What are our products? What are our services? No, How we do business here? How we do our task here? Uh, how long we have been existing, something like that, you know. What are our um, what are our organizational philosophy? What are the core values of this organization? Something like that. It's just like you know, guys. Uh, kung nanligaw kayo sa isang babae, dapat di ba inalam nyo? Bakit kayo nanligaw? Dahil nalaman niyo that interested kayo sa isang girl, uh, gusto niyo siya, no, ang daming aspect, di ba? Kayo din naman mga babae, bago ninyo sagutin dapat ang mga lalaki, dapat nakapag-research na rin kayo kung sino yan siya. No? Dili kayo pag-abot sa ngit-ngit, magpitok-pitok rapo na inyong mata, sulirap da yun, o di ba? So wala na, iurok. Alright? So you have to exert extra effort of doing some research about the organization, about the agency, about the company. Okay? So what's the hiring manager looking for uh, during the during the application process. Mali itong, what the hiring manager uh, is looking for. Okay, number one is your ability to perform the job. No? Pag sinasabi ninyo ability, it refers to your knowledge, your skills. Pag sinasabi mo knowledge, ibig sabihin anong alam mo. All right? Pag sinasabi mo naman skills, if there's a need for you to perform, no? uh, manipulate, all right? something yan that's what you call as skills and then attitude okay uh, so alam mo ba talaga paano gawain ito in short no ano bang alam mo may experience ka na ba so ganun na mga question all right so pag may experience ka then you share your experience about the job no? diba? what what knowledge you have no what can you say how are you going to prove that you know how to perform this task, okay? Now, if you are qualified based on your ability, the next is that about your fitness, no? Culture and personality, in short, your assimilation, your attitude, all right? Third one is about your motivation and your enthusiasm, no? About your, are you goal-driven? Are you driven? Is your ambition... Uh, your priority in life has something to do about your career. No? That if we're going to give you the chance to work in our organization, that you're going to be an asset, no? that you're going to contribute a lot for the for the runs of the organization, something like that. No? And past accomplishments, how can you help the organization? So knowledge of the company. Kaya sabi dito, little or no knowledge about the company is the most common mistake during the job interview. Kaya tatanungin ka, why do you want to work in our company? Diba? Why do why you are applying here? Why you are here? Diba? So sasabihin mo that, uh, why do you want to work in our company? Well, I have read your vision and mission statement, ma'am, which states that. So, memoryahin mo ang vision and mission statement ng company. No? Tapos sasabihin mo, I have read your vision and mission statement, which states that. And that vision and mission statement of your organization is in nexus with my philosophy statement in life, which also states that. Oh, so, gawa ka din ng philosophy statement na medyo angkla doon sa kanilang vision and mission statement. Diba? So sabihin mo, to continue further, looking at the vision and mission statement of your organization and my philosophy statement in life and in my career, there's a perfect match. And if I will be given the opportunity to work in your company, I can assure you that I can contribute to the furtherance of your organization. And I see myself growing in this company over the years. O, diba? So, ayan. Big sabihin, you can only say those words if you are if you have done uh, initial research about the organization, okay? Another thing is communication skills. I'm telling you, whatever is your degree, whatever is your field, whether you're into education, the more if you are into education, no? uh, whether you're into marketing, criminology, or engineering, communication skills is basic, basic, foundational. 
probably in the survey a while ago in the poll you have most of you have not cited communication skills or basic skills because you think that at your level right now at your stage right now that's not that's not it's important but you know that's not what is being looked at most by employers because they have they think that you know at the mac, at the minimum you possess that you know a graduate a bachelor's graduate a graduate of a bachelor's degree should have possessed basic skills in communication meaning that you can write and you can talk well when i say communication skills it does not mean your ability to use english language only but when i say communication skills it's your ability to talk with sense with substance with content with style you know what i mean so regardless regardless of your course regardless of your work as long as you are a degree holder you are really you will be required to communicate no okay job stability loyalty growth potential your interpersonal skills no um your understanding your ability to understand the weaknesses of other people that's why um you also have to be careful in your post in the social media and then nagayaw-yaw ka sa mga tao sa mga kids akin sa imong ginapangyaw-yaw dira nasuko ka sa isa ka pasahero kay ni hangin og kusog ang jeep no nagsakay ka sa jeep nang lupa dang yahang buhok nga nuksok sa imong ilong gipost nimo dito sa social media no you could have approached the girl that means murag horror ka ayo ang imong buhok na nuksok sa kung ilong ug dalunggan di ba so nganong gipost nimo sa social media things like that i mean you know these are dumb and silly things that should not be announced on public you know okay uh critical thinking skills and when you respond to questions you have to cite specific examples remember that it's not a beauty contest that you're given 40 seconds to respond you have enough time no so you have to be clear you have to cite example no you have to cite situation no you have to communicate well it's a conversation even if it's a job interview even if it's a formal type of com uh, communication but it's still a conversation okay so in a job interview generally what employers most look for an interview one is that can you do the job so they will ask questions that will test about your skills your talents your competencies and your ability questions that will test about your interest your motivation and values to work in short kung qualified ka nga you have the skills the competencies and the like the next question is that are you willing to work are you willing to will you do the job no so for example sasabihin nila that um usually in our company we ask employees to work overtime are you willing to do that no or uh, they will ask a question that you know we have our work company is based in manila and we understand that you're from davao right And so we also have a branches in Cebu and in Baguio. So iko excited ka ika kay wow. Gusto ko sa Manila or pwede na pud ko sa Cebu no. Gusto nimo mapalayo lang sa Davao no. Tapos the employer or the interviewer says that and our company is helping the government no in Marawi rebuilding program. That's why we are here in Davao because we're planning to put up a branch in Marawi. So uh, if you will be hired then you will be assigned in Marawi now sa amna ro nimo diba so things like that you know will you do the job will you fit in the company and its culture so it's something to do about your interpersonal skills your adaptability and your positive work attitude okay so remember those stuff and think of things that will respond to potential questions that will be raised about you performing the job your interest in performing the job and yourself fitting into the company's culture okay ah uh, meron sinasabi dito that being employed is a weakness and being employable is an opportunity so what does it mean ah uh, alam niyo sometimes iniisip natin that um, pag nagreport tayo sa office 
usually ang office hours is 8 to 5 o'clock and that's it no that's okay ayan so yan ang buhay ko every day 8 to 5 eh ngayon nagka pandemic no and the pandemic really has tested tested the the agility of many organizations the resiliency of many organizations and even us no how resilient we are how adaptable we are no how prepared we are for situations like this no uh, so sinasabi dito that what is more important is that you are employable not being employed but that you are employable and what does it mean you need to possess certain skills some set of skills that even if you know situations like this strikes no or for example that if there's a need for the organization for the company or for the organization for the agency to reduce its workforce then ikaw yung tao na hindi una maapektuhan or kung naapektuhan ka man nasama ka doon sa natanggal halimbawa lang you're not afraid because it's easy for you to find a job even if you are in a situation like this why because you have so many skills no you are a valued person you have you are a talented person that really company will go after you because you are talented why you are talented because you have employable skills and you have most of the skills these skills that are flash on screen again number one on the list is communication skills kahit saan ka no number one talaga ang communication skills this is a basic skills all right mm. good human relations no? your ability to mingle and assimilate with other people ayan kaya tinatanong kanina ng isang kain 500 student ng morning na paano sir kung wala akong ano wala akong backer o di ba Eh kung wala kang backer, merong isang aplikante na may backer siya and he or she also knows the job. Diba? So talo ka because there's a question of how good is your networking skills. All right? Work ethics, skillful, ayan, innovative, global vision, maturity, moral, morality. Kaya I suggest kahit 500 students, you take note of these skills and over time, you try to develop these skills. I'm not saying that right now, you have all these 10 skills, no? but I, I'm saying is that you develop this over time. And if you try to develop this, if you try to, you know, uh, go back to this list from time to time and ensure that you have this, then it will make you employable. Okay. These are time tested employable skills. Also, take a look at our core values in the university, no? like excellence. So when you see excellence, you make it sure that everything that you do adhere to standards, conform to the norms, conform to the requirements. No? So pag sinasabi ng teacher mo na ito yung assignment, no? these are the requirements, these are the things that you need to consider. Before submitting your assignment, before uh, submitting your paper, you have to make it sure that this conforms to the standard. Alam nyo na i-stress ang mga, hindi naman na i-stress, no? common feedback ng mga ka 500 na na facilitators is that even if how many times sinasabi na ganito dapat ang gawin ninyo when you write your application letter and your resume, others are not really doing great. No, I mean, mali, mali talaga. I do not know if they have attended the seminar or not. That's why what we are doing is that we are posting, No, we have prepared a supplemental video that's uploaded in our YouTube channel in the University of Mindanao so that in case you have missed, no? things, important things that we have discussed today, then you can go back to that YouTube channel and try to find out meron pang mga animation, meron pang mga sample na naka-flash no? para talaga mapalo ninyo. No? So when you say excellence, you conform to what is expected. All right, the, the output that you have produced conform to the standards, conform to the specification. That's what they mean by excellence. And we instill that to the system, to the abyss of the being of our students. Because when you say UM yan, ayan, excellent yan sila eh. Diba? Kaya nga, sikat yung ating mga sudyante nagtatap sa board exam. No? 
daming pumapasa sa board exam dahil nga doon sa ating core value na yan. No? The other one is honesty and integrity. Importante sa inyo yung inyong core values, no? yung value system. Eh, ang problema sa atin Filipinos, no? we don't have a positive impression from our Asian neighbors, from Singapore, from Thailand, even from Vietnam, because of our value system that we are not honest. No? Many of our leaders are corrupt. May problema tayo sa pag-ibig fund. I mean, oh, tama, no? PhilHealth fund. fund. Uh, ano pa? Yung mga ganun, no? uh, minsan nasisway yung ating value system because of some personal interest. All right. Kaya nga sa Asia, no, isa tayo sa may pinakamaraming positive sa COVID dahil matitigas sa mga ulo ng mga Pilipino. Well, consider na rin natin ang ating population, no, compared to other countries that their population is sparse compared to us, no. So, but take a look at that honesty and integrity, innovation, no. Ibig sabihin that. You don't. You challenge the status quo. You are not contented with with the things that you have been doing, no, for quite some time, no. You you think of something new, all right? And when you say innovation, hindi lang naman yun bagong gadget, bagong you know something that you can hold on, something that you can touch, but even ideas, no. Pag bago ang idea mo, that's also innovation and teamwork. So. Take a look at these points. Uh, instill this always in your mind, because after all, you spend, no? You spend a lot for you to earn a degree, for you to because you want to be professional someday. You want to get a good life, and and taking a look at these points will bolster your professional index, no? Uh, in interview, there's the rule of three. What do you mean by that? You have to be brief. Do not go around the bush. I'm not saying that unlike in a beauty contest that there's a 40 second time limit, ikaw din, five minutes din ang sagot mo. Hindi naman, no? But what I'm trying to say is that when you respond to questions, you have to be brief, but you have to, the brief answers are full of content, full of substance, no? You have to be articulate, all right? And you have to be structured, all right? Take note of, be careful of mispronounced words because we Filipinos are, they, we have an impression that, you know, English has been there for since elementary until we graduate from college, then we expect that you can communicate well. Rule of marketing, when you're in a job interview, it's, an, it's like selling yourself, no? So when you sell yourself, you're addressing the needs of the interviewer And if they will hire you, what's in it for them? So what you have, what you can offer, para bang give them a reason that if they will not hire you, it's not your loss. It's going to be theirs. You know what I mean? And you focus on them. There are also four types of interview questions. Um, one is simple question. No? These are dichotomized questions. These are... Uh, either the answer there is yes or no, uh, or a one-word answer, okay? Um, simple questions is are asked because it will set the tone, no? It will set the tone, the atmosphere of the interview, of the job interview. So the intention there is that for you to establish a connection, no? a strong connection, bond a strong link with the interviewer for you to feel relaxed you no know, instead of you know remaining in attention field moments okay kasi di ba nakaka-tense naman talaga yung ma-interview ka nasa interview ka di ba so uh, simple questions are asked because para ma-relax ka din hindi naman din kailangan na ang interview no magpakitang gilas para anuhin ka or what no hindi naman no As much as possible, they should set the tone, a friendly environment, a friendly atmosphere, okay? Para naman ikaw makasagot. The other one is object questions. This, uh, this require more descriptive answers. So these are object questions, which means that you have to explain, you have to discuss, all right? This is where you are going to start your 
a good communication skills. You may cite an example. You may cite a situation. When you answer, you try to have a structure. All right. Okay. Whether your structure is inductive or deductive. No. Okay. All right. Isipin mo that this is really a conversation. The third one is mirror question. Why these questions are asked? Because the intention of which is they want to know more about you, about your personality, about your character, about you as a person, whether you are a friendly, nice person. You know what I mean? So that's why these questions are asked. That's why you have to be careful, you know? The fourth one is unconnected questions. And you might be wondering during the job interview why these questions are asked. No? Because these questions are asked, especially if the interviewer want to want they want to dig, they want to probe no? more about you. So your mirror question, okay, alam mo na it's about yourself, but itong unconnected, parang anong connection no? but Still, it's about you. Uh, these questions are asked because they want to know more about you and they want to see how are you going to handle questions like this, okay? So, sample, uh, if you're an animal, which one would you want to be? So, say connection, Anna, no, di ba? Oh. Pero, pwede na siya, no? When you cite an animal, sasabihin mo, uh, you want to be a tiger. Why a tiger? What characteristic of a tiger that you possess and how this characteristic can be used in the position. Yung parang ganun. How are you going to make connection? How are you going to establish connection of your answer, even if it is not relevant, no? you sound it not so relevant, but how are you going to connect that to the position? Okay? So some common job interview questions like, uh, tell me something about yourself. Ayan. Pabalik-balik yan. Yan talaga ang unang question sa inyo. So what you can do is that don't get personal or long-winded. You can prepare a one to two minute synopsis of what qualifies you and what makes you the perfect candidate for the job. No. Use what you know about the job to describe your strengths, your accomplishments, and experiences relevant to the position. What do you know about our company? That's why you have to do advanced research no, about the company so that you can say something about the company and that how are you going to relate those information that you get about the company to your intention of being part with them. Okay? I remember before when I applied for a group study exchange program sponsored by Rotary and those who will be accepted in the program will travel to the United States and stay there for quite some time, for a few months now. And they will be exposed to different organizations. I was asked the same question. I was asked, why do you want to join in the Rotary Group Study Exchange Program? And ako, prior to my interview, I went there in the interview area, in the venue earlier as expected. And also have a tay a tay with other applicants, no? And I learned from them that some of them are, there's a judge, no? There's a city councilor, uh, environmentalist, doctors, you know? In short, their credentials are impressive. Their credentials are stellar. And I feel like my position and my credentials, my achievements are nothing compared to theirs, you know? I'm not even... I'm not even a, a, a little, no? So in short, I'm nothing compared to them. So if the basis would be credentials, wala ko, no? I mean, what's my chances of being accepted, okay? So when I was asked that question, I did not bank on, on my credentials. No? But what, what I tried to highlight was that my potential that if I will be accepted in the program, well, I can do this and I can do that. And I learned that Rotary is a civic organization. Uh, the organization existed for some community service and the like. And they're helping different organizations, 
they're helping marginalized sectors and the like. So I told them that if I will be given the opportunity to be part of the team who will travel to United States, um, and I see that the raison data of Rotary as an organization is about service to others. So my representation is not my personal representation. Pero kung ikaw ana ang pangutan on, may unjug ka na, oh, I'm excited to see Uncle Sam. It has been my childhood dream and every Filipino's dream, no? To see Uncle Sam. De, bakit sa mga dili ganahan mo at to US, lalo na yun kung libre, no? But I told them that if I will be chosen, it's not a personal representation, but I'm going to represent two most important sectors of the society, which is very close to your heart as, a, as an organization, as a civic organization. These are education and employment. So if I will travel to the US, I will visit universities and use the platform you know, to learn best practices of these universities. And when I return here in the Philippines, I will again use that voice, I will use again that platform to share these best practices, for example, to my fellow educators, fellow academicians. No? I will also visit schools and share my experience and the learnings that I got from my travel in the United States. Second, employment. Because I'm with the Public Employment Service Office of the Department of Labor and Employment. No? And I intend to visit Department of Labor also in the United States, learn from their best practices. Iyan yung time na nagkaroon ng economic crisis ang US. So interesting because we will also get important lessons on how they breeze through from that economic slum. Diba? And again, I will use my voice as an officer in the Public Employment Service Office to share that, that best experience with my other peso managers no, in the region, hoping that it will help curb the unemployment problem in our area or something like that. Right? So, you know, uh, I'm in a mission. If you are going to accept me, I'm in a mission. It's not for personal reason or for personal desire, but I'm in a mission. I will bring your name. I will bring the organization there. And when I return home, I can assure you that I can fulfill the mission expected of me. Diba? So yung mga ganun, okay. What's your greatest weakness? Well, no one is perfect. No human being is perfect. So don't say that you have no weakness. Okay. You have to cite one or two weaknesses. But the most important thing there in citing your weakness is that how you overcome that weakness and how you turn that weakness into something that's positive and how you learn from that weakness to make you a better person, all right? For example, ako, uh, what I don't like is that I hate to be stuck in a traffic, my goodness. It will get me so stressed. If I'm stuck in a traffic, I hate that. No, that's why I like to live in a in an area that's the population is so sparse. No, because for sure there's no traffic there. So, so I hate to be stuck in a traffic because if I'm stuck in a traffic, if I go to the office, uh, it will ruin my day and I will not be productive anymore because you know I'm stuck in a traffic. So, in order for me not to ruin my day, I have to wake up early. No, I should not travel. I should not drive on during peak hours. No, so that my mood will not be affected or something like that. So I know I know how to overcome uh, something that can you know that can make me silly, that can make me stress. Okay, so you have to cite. You prepare. You have to identify. What is your weakness? How you overcome that? And how that weakness, no? And overcoming that weakness makes you a better person. Why should we hire you? Don't say that. Why not? <laughs> Again, you're silly. Uh, don't say that, you know, you're making announcement that you're hiring for this particular position. Again, don't do that, no? You have to say that you're the best person for the job. And you have to back up your answers with, with your qualifications, with your experience, with the skills that you possess. And you have to sell them with your experience and your passion. Okay? Do you have any question? Uh, do not let, please don't 
allow the interview, the job interview to end without you asking any question. I'm telling you, I mean, you will be forgettable. No? You will not be remembered by the interviewer because you have not asked any question. And remember, you can test the intelligence of a person not based on how he or she answers question, but based on how he or she asks question. Okay, so you ask questions. No, you ask questions that would at least catch the attention and the interest of the interviewer. All right. Okay. What can you contribute most to our organization? Mingon puka. Alam mam na di amutan. Agpila po ng amutan, no? Contribute manggon. Nagingon unta kamam kay. Nagdala unta kung kwarta war mo kay kwarta, di ba? So, no, it's not about you know what you can give to the in, to the company or to the agency in terms of monetary value, but it's about if we will hire you, then how can you be an asset to the organization? No? How can you be a good person, a good asset, a good resource to the organization? So you can say that over and above my well appreciated and commended performance in the university. And during my on-the-job training, I work harder and I'm more committed to work than most people. Come to think of this, ma'am, that next to my relationship to God and family comes my work. This is very important. This statement is very important because, you know, you're a young individual. You're in a different generation. You're iGen, you're digital natives. Your life, your perspective in life is somewhat different from those who will do the interview. They probably come from a different generation, like Generation X, Y, others are baby boomers, which means that they're a bit conservative. They have different perspective in life than your perspective. So what does it mean? They have an impression. These people from other generations have impression that your generation, you are not loyal. Kaya nga nauso sa inyo ang kasabihang hashtag walang forever. Although totoo naman talaga, no, wag kayong maniwala sa forever. Wala naman talagang forever, no. If you're a person who believes in forever, it's like you're the person who believes that you can go to the moon and the star, okay? So there's no such thing as forever. But anyway, the thing there is that kaya nga kayo, you don't like to be to be stuck in a nook. You know what I mean? You don't stay in one area. You don't stick to one because variety is the name of the game in your perspective. The more encounters that you have, the more exciting your life is. No, diba? The more oomph you'll have in this world. All right? So that's why sinasabi dito that next to my relationship to God and my family comes my work is that it's about your loyalty. It's about your commitments. That when you are given an assignment, when you're given a responsibility, that you make it sure that you can deliver your best, that you can give your all. Okay? All right. So, yun ha, because uh, kailangan magmatch yung perspective ninyo at saka yung people who will do the interview who are most likely come from different generations. I'd like to share this. Uh, there's, a, there's a survey done by PMAP, no? PMAP is an organization of HR managers in the country. And there's a survey that uh, asked them about the common interview mistakes made by applicants, of course, during job interview. No? So topping the list is answering cell phone or texting, which is not good. So the suggestion is that you have to switch your phone to silent mode or turn off your cell phone. No? Uh, dressing inappropriately, that's why that's going to be our next session. No? In our next seminar, you will be taught uh, how to dress properly, what color of your attire that will at least attract no, the attention and win you over uh, for the position. And then third, 69% appearing disinterested and then appearing arrogant, appearing unprepared chewing gum, no? and not providing specific answers. They think that they're in a beauty pageant. No? So it's not. You have to cite an example, cite a situation, and close your statement. And included in the list 
not asking good questions. No? Kaya baon talaga kayo ng question for job interview. Another one, uh, this is going to be my last slide, some social media etiquette to avoid. Anyway, if you have question, type in your questions in the Q&A chat box. For those who are watching uh, in the YouTube channel, no, uh, you can also type the question probably in the chat box. All right. So social media etiquette to avoid, one is that blustering or attacking other person's character or being engaged with organization's failure. Again, no person is perfect. No organization is perfect. And if you keep on complaining and attacking a person, character of the person or the organization, that means that you don't have any allowance on the imperfection of the other people or the organization. All right? Yaw yoka, for example, sa signal sa PLDT, no? Pila de imuhang kuan, plan, dili ka ng 25 pesos lang or 50 pesos. Wow, wak mangay nag yaw yaw tong 199 ang plan. Isipa nga lahi baya ang imuhang connection, tower, no? Di ba? So dili good ka pariha o connection sa tag 1999 o ikaw lang ang tag 25 pesos. At saka nag announce ang PLDT. Uh, hindi naman ako nagadepensa sa PLDT, no? Pero nag announce naman sila prior na magkaroon sila ng uh, cabling system uh, ng check-up. No? So, masisira yung kanilang connection. Okay? So, wala tayong magawa doon. Alright? So, kung ka kay init ka ayo. Oh. Saan na nato? Diba? Pahawa na lang there is earth. Foul, profane, and vulgar words. No? So, in short, very simple. If you have nothing to say good to other people, especially in the social media, don't say it. Keep it to yourself. All right? If you have nothing good to say, no, kung wala ka man lang magandang masabi, huwag ka nalang magsalita. All right? Kasi kung gagawin mo yan, uh, walang diferensya sa iyo na nakaskwela sa isang university at makapag-earn ng isang degree sa mga hindi nakapag-skwela. All right? So, uh, again, if you have nothing good to say, Just keep your mouth shut. And third, sharing an original post or articles without making any rational discussions or comments. Okay? Uh, hindi mo naman yan work. Hindi mo naman yan original post and why you are sharing that. No? You share that, but you have to say something. No? You have to make a comment. Okay? So I think that's all. Um, time for us to entertain questions so i will stop sharing and benji will facilitate let's see if we have questions in the q a box yes for those who are here in the webinar or in the zoom you may use the q a um button you know, for you to share your questions and it will be answered by sir ray and also um on youtube there are questions also sir can youtube Yes, sir. In our YouTube live. Sabi dito, sir, um, is it necessary na mag-stock ang HRSFP personal account? Okay. Ganito yan, ha? Hindi naman siguro stocking. Stocking man tawag nun. Um, it's, a, it's a public social media. Number one suggestion ko sa inyo is that if you have a social media account, dapat kompletong name ang isulat ninyo no like ako Reynaldo Castro wag yung mga aliases wag yung mga characters that cannot be searched you know social media you are there because you want to expand your friends no network yan eh di ba network of friends so why you are making your profile private there's something wrong there no it's giving the potential hr a bad impression no okay number two Since it is a public uh, site which can be accessed by anybody, then it can be used for background investigation. All right. So when they do stalking, if you think that it is stalking, well, they do that because they want to know more about you. No? And the things that you have posted there and uploaded there in your social media account would give them an idea of who you are as a person. That's why you have to be careful. Okay. All right.
So do you have other questions from our webinar? Sorry, there's another question, sir. Does first impression last? <laughs> Sagot ko dyan hindi. Hindi naman. Because first impression will serve as the basis of the succeeding things that I'm going to do with you. No? In a job interview, ang first impression na makikita natin from an applicant is yung the way you dress up, the, the way you carry yourselves. And if the way you dress up and the way you carry yourself are basis for first impression, which means that if you are confident the way you do that, therefore, if I am the interviewer, I will also ask questions that will test how confident you are. No? So in my first impression, you are a confident person. Let me see if you can sustain that confidence. No? And that depends on how are you going to manage yourself? If you can sustain that, then that's, you know, it's true that statement will be true that the first impression will last because that's really who you are. But if you cannot sustain that, if you cannot maintain that, then the impression will be changed. Ah, may lang maday ka sa sugod, pero dili ka kalahutay. You know what I mean? Oh. So how important, why the first impression is important because... I'm going to give you another tip. The longer the conversation will happen during job interview, you know what I mean? If the interviewer spends so much time, if the interviewer is throwing so many questions at you, that means that the interviewer is interested on you. All right? But if the interviewer, but if the interview takes shorter time compared to other applicants, it's giving you an idea that the interviewer is not interested at you. All right? Pariha na na sa kuwa, no? Kung during sa mga applications, mga exchange things, uh, it's just wasting my time. But if I find that person interesting to talk, converse, then I might spend so much time with that person. All right? So again, that's why the first impression is important because it will influence the action of the interviewer in the succeeding, you know, uh, series of questions. Right from our webinar, sir. Sir, how to handle for the interview when you feel nervous? Um, that's why mindsetting yan eh, no? Bakit ka ba nervous? Because number one, masiwa ka ka pamahaw, makulaps o na, no? <laughs> number two, um, you are not sure what to answer, alright? Uh, ayan. So, what you can do is that you have to prepare. Ako, alam nyo, one thing that can bolster my confidence I'm sorry, nawala ang connection. So, I think I'm back, Benji, no? Yes, sir, you're, you're back. Okay. Um, let's go back to my experience. Uh, one of my most dreaded experience was when I was in, interviewed in the embassy. So, I'm tense, you know, even if I'm prepared, I was like nervous, no? Um, there's a feeling of uncertainties. 
So, but you know, one thing that can help me boost my confidence is to wear, I have attire that, you know, these are for interview, for a public speaking and the like, and it can make me look good. You know what I mean? So I have the feeling that if I'm going to wear this attire, I look good. You know what I mean? So it can help set my mindset. No, I mean, my, my, my thinking that I'm okay and I'm fine and I can answer the questions. Number two is that you have to read. No? What is this interview all about? What is this uh, purpose all about? No? And I have to do research. And if I have prepared well, there's also a feeling that, you know, I'm confident. I can confidently respond to questions. So, normal yan, no? Natitense tayo, but dapat ang point dyan is that you should manage your emotion. That's why in ka 500, we have series in the University of Minana. We have series of programs of activities that will help you expose yourself in a situations like that. Because I believe that the more you are exposed to situations like this, in a tenseful moment like this, job interview, the more that you can manage yourself well in the future, okay? So in Kaid 500, we have one session wherein uh, we will ask you for a job interview. And then we also have program where we invite no, employers that they will be the one to interview you, okay? So ganon. Another question, sir, from the webinar. If nakatrabaho ko nga dili related sa course, sir, and then ibutang sa resume, need good ba or ibutang resume sa akatong experience? The non-related experience, sir, is it okay to put that one on the resume? Mm, dili related sa course. Uh -huh. uh, actually, as I said, possible that uh, your work experience is not relevant no, to your degree, to your career. But there are other things that you have gained, that you have learned from that. And those are the soft skills. You know what I mentioned? Uh, the ability, your ability to manage pressure, you know? uh, your ability to follow orders. So even if, halimbawa, nagtrabaho ka, hindi naman siya connected yung, yung exposure, hindi naman. But the fact that you have experience working, there are things that probably will be useful in your future employment. No? So isa site mo yun, di ba? You bank on those. Uh, marunong ka mag-receive ng order. You were able to beat deadlines, di ba? You follow company norms and company policies and, and, and the like, di ba? So these are things that you also have, uh, we're able to get, no? we're able to learn from your exposure. So you can cite those probably during job interview. Uh, if you cite them in your resume, and if the interviewer will ask you, how is this experience of yours relevant to your to the position that you are applying right now? So pwede ganun ang sagot mo, di ba? Okay. Question from the answer from YouTube. How to sell yourself if you have no experience at all, no outstanding academic record, no leadership experiences, or no extracurricular exposure? Kaya nga, ang punto ngayon is that the nice thing is that uh, nasa university pa kayo, so make the most out of it. You correct that. No? You correct that. Di pa naman kayo graduate, so you still have time to do that because let's accept the fact that the time that you will be graduate no, and look for jobs, there are applicants who have better experience no, and better exposure than you are. So I don't like to give you false hopes that there's a bigger possibility, bigger chance that you will be chosen unless the other applicants have the same no, uh, level of experience with you are, with you, no? But if they have better experience than you are, then you will be left behind. So make the most of your time in the university right now. Even if you're in a situation like this, probably you can think of some innovative 
ideas no uh, and or engagement that you can do and probably that will give you competitive edge over the other okay so as i said i'm not going to give you false hopes make the most of your time that you are still here in the university that you are not still applying for jobs no correct that like ako i feel like my communication is not good so i am really watching videos in youtube no i spend time uh, watching videos in youtube about communication public speaking and the like if i think that i want to learn this particular skill about statistics about uh, anything no about painting uh, about making a nice powerpoint presentation i spend my time watching videos in youtube all right so which means that i know what is lacking in me that's why i try to correct that no? i try to correct that and uh, find ways how to fill in the gap in me so that the time that i will be needing that then that's okay for example itong mga technology no paggamit ng mga zoom paggamit ng mga google suite no mga IT related stuff and the like ayoko din naman sabihin na kahit nasa ibang henerasyon ako i cannot cope with the digital natives no the language of digital natives so i have to go with them also all right okay all right sir another question um sir maka-affect po ba interview if hindi fluent sa english does it affect the interview if you're not fluent in English? Uh, okay. Uh, let's put it this way. Do not outsmart the interviewer. If the interviewer is asking you in English, the, at least the minimum you respond in English. Do not respond in French or in German. No? Do not outsmart. Huh? So, ibig sabihin, uh, you have to be kind and courteous to the interviewer. If the interviewer is asking you in Filipino, in Tagalog, or in Visaya, then you can respond in Tagalog or in Visaya. Now, what if the interviewer is asking in English? So he expects that you also respond in English. You know what I mean? Again, let's go back to the point kanina that if you're not so good in English and there's another candidate who is good in English, you know, human as we are, we will really be impressed with a person who can speak well in English. No? Unless, again, all other applicants are like me, who is not good in English, who cannot speak spontaneously in English. Diba? So we are giving difficult and hard uh, ways for the interviewer to select the best applicant. All right? Okay. So... Again, if you think that you are not good in English, do something about that. You still have time to check and correct and improve yourself in English communication. Again, I will not give you false hopes that if you are not good in English, uh, you can beat other applicants because you're not the only applicant. Even if the job does not require you good English, no, uh, there are there are jobs, no, there are fields of discipline. That does not require so much, you know, stellar English communication. But if, what if there are applicants who are so good in English? You will be left behind. Okay. Walang mic. How do we control unnecessary gesture during interview? We will talk that next meeting. Yes. That's going to be our topic for next session. So watch out. Reserve that question for next session, okay? Mike. Question from the YouTube live. Kung overwhelming kayo ang resume sa isa, sir, then ikaw like two pages lang, pero you are confident that you can do the work. Is there a chance na mas madawat ka over sa iya? Ito daw? Talks about um, the the, uh, the resume of um, other applicant is overwhelming, and then Saya is two pages long. Does it matter, though, sir? Or um, pale two pages long Saya ha, but you are confident. Mm, okay. He's confident that he can do the work. Is there a chance okay. that mas madawat sa over siya sa katung overwhelming kayo ang resume? 
remember that the purpose of the resume is is not to get the job. You know what I mean? You will not be hired based on what you have written in your resume. The purpose of the resume is for you to get an interview. So if you're going to ask me which is more important, both are important, but which final stage will be the basis for the selection of the best candidate is the job interview. So why is it that questions are thrown like this and like that? Because of what you have written in your resume, I hope you were able to follow my answer. Okay, so even if you are not, even if the resume is not so impressive, but you were good in convincing the hiring manager that you're the best person for the position, even if it is not well written, but the fact that you have reached the interview, therefore there's really a chance for you to get the job, even if comparing your resume with the other applicants. Meron pa iba mga ganda pagkasulat, no? Marami ang nakasulat, no, 'di ba? But you have convinced the hiring manager that you are capable, you are the most qualified person for the position. Then you have to think that the interview is the deciding factor. Okay? Sige. Last two? Last question, okay, last two sir from this uh second to the last question is here in the webinar is it fine to ask tips from the interviewer after the interview like tips to do for the next interview because the current interview is not going that it's not that good uh do not ask tips but probably what you can ask from the applicant from the interviewer is that how you did how you perform how's your performance in the job interview no um ano siya, no? parang, parang there's a twist there that you can say, what do you think of my performance, ma'am? If I'm going to ask you a question, how is my performance today? If there is, you know, regardless whether I will be accepted or not for the position, but I am also interested for my self-improvement and being you, who is a very experienced person, you have interviewed so many applicants, Uh, what do you think of my performance today and which area you think that I need to improve more? Something like that. Sometimes it's the way you ask. So you have to be polite uh, and kind in the way you ask that question. Okay. Last question from the YouTube live, sir. Um, what to do if the initial questions are in the English language then on the succeeding questions like it's Bisaya and Tagalog. So what language that should be used again uh, your benchmark there is the language of the interviewer if she asked that in english then you respond in english if she now asked that in vernacular or in filipino then you respond in filipino okay all right so i believe that's it sir We're done with our DNA. Thank you very much. So uh, before Benji, no, uh, so I'd like to say that again, congratulations because your enrolling, no, your being in the university now proves that you are resilient, that you are agile, no matter what the situation is. Uh, let us all pray that uh, we will get through this the soonest possible time. And for sure, we will get through this. No, The thing there is that the most important thing now is that that we have to maintain, we have to be safe always and healthy always. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Sir Ray, for those substantial talk with regards to um, how to win a, uh, how to write a winning cover letter and a resume. So also we would like to say thank you for all those who participated. And please don't forget to um, have your attendance. We, uh, I believe the coaches has already given uh, the link, the Google form, because we will close the attendance at exactly 5 p.m. So we, we encourage everyone to please make a substantial insights, no, or write substantial insights on the Google form because others are not, do, uh, are not following the instruction. They just put their resume and, and cover letter. So what's the insight no, you've, um, you've got from, from our seminar? So we're expecting that your write-ups no, are very substantial because you are now in the higher level no, of, of your, I mean, in the fourth year level, you're now in the senior. 
So we expect for a very good write-up. So of course, other instruction no, for component B and C and the mga activities, it will just be posted on your, um, on your LMS. Now for those who are not able to attend no, both the morning and afternoon session, because maybe of time constraints or they have their work, uh, um, you just visit no, the YouTube channel or we will also post some instruction to the LMS of what are the things that they have to do in order for them to catch up no, with our seminar uh, this afternoon. All right, so I guess yun lang yung mga announcement natin. Other things that we're going to do or instruction it will be posted on your LMS. So thank you very much, everyone. God bless and keep safe.